Leola Manning was a fascinating individual. Born in Chattanooga in 1905, Leola Manning and her family made East Tennessee their home by the mid-1910s. By the time she was eight years old or so, she was living here in Knoxville. Uh, her mother was, uh, uh, was a well-known uh, religious woman and a, and a musician as well, so she came from a musical family and a very religious family. Manning followed in her mother's evangelical footsteps and earned her vocal stripes singing in church. In the late 1920s, record companies began holding extended recording sessions with artists in East Tennessee cities like Johnson City and Bristol. And in 1929, prominent record label Vocalion held sessions in Knoxville at the St. James Hotel. They knew that there was a lot of American music out there. They weren't sure what the market for different kinds of music was. You know, country music was brand new. Uh, blues had been recorded for a few years, but they were, still weren't sure where that was going. Jazz was around. Uh, but these were all new popular kinds of music. Most of what Vocalion found in Knoxville was country music with a sprinkle of jazz and novelty music thrown in. Manning attended these sessions and gave the record label a more unique sound. She sounds like an urban blues singer, but her heart and her repertoire is much more gospel-based and she viewed herself as a church singer, not as a blues singer. Leola recorded six songs in total during both the 1929 and 1930 sessions, a mix of popular music and gospel songs, but also some original works. She recorded two songs that she wrote herself, uh, and, and the amazing thing is she wrote them right before she recorded them, and we know, we, we know that she wrote them right before she recorded them because they describe uh, crimes that happened right before the sessions took place. And one is called the Arcade Building Moan. In March of 1930, a deafening explosion rattled Gay Street and the Arcade Building was quickly engulfed in flames. Four people died in what was the worst fire Knoxville had seen in 20 years. She really seemed to feel for these people who died in this, in this apartment fire and described them in, in detail in the song. Manning's second original song was called Satan is Busy in Knoxville. The song chronicled two recent murders in the city. One was the killing of Lefford Franklin, a Swan's Bakery delivery driver who was robbed and murdered while making his final stop of the day. The other occurred near Mountain View School where Leola Manning was employed as a cafeteria worker. The victim, Amanda Toole, was found with her head nearly severed by a rusty razor. But she describes these two and she, she thinks uh, this must be uh, that, that Satan is, is really at work in Knoxville causing all these apparently senseless murders. It's how she felt about her life. She felt like a lot of negative things were happening around her. Vocalion never paid Manning for her contribution to the sessions, but her original songs did enjoy a modicum of success. I've found evidence that they had some popularity out west in Texas and Oklahoma especially. The six songs at the St. James Sessions were the only ones Manning ever recorded. Following her musical endeavor, she devoted her life to her faith and evangelism and married her guitarist Eugene Ballinger. Lived quietly the rest of her life in Knoxville, lived into, into her 90s. But this was uh, something she, she may have almost forgotten about it. Leola Manning's work was dormant for almost six decades. They were forgotten about almost completely until the 1980s and 90s, and I think it was an Austrian company I heard that found them and, and put them into a compilation. Today, blue scholars study the songs left behind by Leola Manning and the St. James Sessions, now known as the Knoxville Sessions, have been released in their entirety. She combined uh, a, a, lot of, a, a lot of different things. Uh, from the blues to gospel and, and, and at this moment in time. And uh, if she hadn't been there, we, uh, Knox would be poorer for it, uh, for that. She, you know, she really was part of the texture of her time and part of, the, part of what we should remember about the 20th century.